So I'm here with my good friend, Tech with Tim. You've probably seen him before, probably seen so many courses. Today we're going to talk about like what is the difference between AI engineers, software engineers. We're just going to talk about his story, my story, what are the difference and so on, and also like why we got into that specific field. So so just get started right off the bat, how did you get into software engineering? Yeah, for sure. So I've been coding for a long time. Like I feel old when I say this, but I'm still quite young. I started coding when I was about 12 years old. And uh, what brought me into that is really that in school, like things were pretty easy for me. I didn't really feel challenged. But when I found coding, it was like the first thing I found that was really hard. Like a lot of people think I was this child prodigy and I just learned coding really fast. Like, no, it was super difficult. But that's why I got addicted to it, because no. it was the first thing I found that was really challenging. So I just got obsessed over it. I was learning it, kept learning it, kept challenging myself, getting better, better, better. It took years before I was even decent at it. But yeah, it just became honestly an addiction to like see how good I could get in this thing and uh, really kind of reach my full like mental potential with coding. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's definitely like a great story. I'm coming from like not not the same background, but again, like I was just in university, always been playing like a lot of computer games and so on. So always been interested in tech in general. Uh, coding was like like pretty late. Um, I think like in Star of University, I got introduced to coding. I'm from robotics background, so it's not completely AI and so on. But we got introduced to AI, we got introduced to programming and so on, and I was just like very fascinated. The, the ones that got me into AI, machine learning, and all that was probably like Tesla. So they're doing a ton of different cool stuff with the full self driving. Now the robotics and all of that, like humanoid robots, how do we take data? And then we can train like a model, and that model can act like do outputs that we can use in the real world. So it's just like very fascinating. My niece is computer vision. So I act like, okay, how do we understand what's going on in images? I'm from robotic background. So if we attach like a camera to a robotics arm, the computers, they need to see, they can only see like through a camera. So it's basically just a computer's eye. How do we take data, feed that into a model and then act like control physical objects in the real world, just based on computers and also cameras. So that's kind of like how I got into it and what caught my caught my interest. For sure, yeah, and it sounds like you had some curiosity, which I think is what a lot of people that get into software development have. Like, they're just curious. They want to know how things work. Like, they want to see, okay, this app, like, how do I build that? How does it work behind the scenes? Uh, and that for me was also what drove it. Like, I was, you know, taking apart my laptop when I was like 13 years old, like in my room. Uh, I, would, I liked robotics too. Like, just anything engineering where you're building stuff with your hands and you're seeing like nothing to this finished project sure. uh, is really rewarding. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to that. Yeah, for sure. And it doesn't really matter like what you're doing, like AI machine learning, computer vision, coding in general, like software system and so on. It's, yeah, it's actually like just building something from scratch, seeing it grow and then act like see it do useful stuff. So how did you actually learn general software engineering? Yeah, so for me, like I didn't really have a roadmap when I started, which yeah. was a huge mistake, which I recommend now, but I was just like obsessed with it. So I would just go online, I would look up like random YouTube videos, and I was kind of like the definition of like tutorial hell, at least at the beginning of my journey, where I would just go and like binge all these series. But what I did well, which I think a lot of people are not doing now, is I would always follow along with the videos. So where I got the most now knowledge is I would watch like a free video online, go through, you know, like a 20 video Python no. tutorial series, but I would actually code out everything that was in the video. So like, even if they're saying like print dog, object cat, whatever, like anything they were doing, I would code it out and I would pause the video and I would constantly kind of challenge myself to guess what was going to come next. So I started with that. Cause I think when you're starting, like you don't know what you don't know. So you need no. to kind of have someone guiding you, even if it's a free video or a course or something along those lines. But then once you get through that, it's really important that you have some kind of roadmap. And I made the mistake of not having this and I jumped between so many languages. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna learn <laughs> HTML, then I'll do PHP, then I'll do JavaScript, then I did Python, then I did C Sharp. And it wasn't until I'd been doing this for about four years, keep in mind I started when I was 12, so not as matured, that I realized like, hey, okay, I'm like okay <laughs> in all of these areas, but I'm not good in any one of them. And then I really dialed in on Python, started getting good at Python game development, getting into the AI space a little bit, doing a lot more web development, and then kind of getting more into a full stack software engineer from there. And once you've like learned how to learn in the software engineering no. space, I think a lot of you guys know what I mean by that, then it's easier to say, okay, I'll watch like a short video and then immediately apply it into a project. And then a lot of your learning comes from, okay, I have this thing I wanna build, let me go figure out how for to sure. build that. And for then sure. finding the resources to help you do that. So again, kind of starting with tutorials, developing some kind of roadmap after I had an idea what I wanted to do, then really diving into focus on, okay, I wanna learn something, let me make this a project, and then I will pick all the piece of knowledge I need to be able to build that project. And then from there, it's, yeah, history. Yeah, for sure. I think it's kind of like the same in, in, in AI engineering. If there's one difference, it's probably like the programming language, we just go with Python, we just need to create the models, use the different frameworks and so on. So the biggest concerns is like AI engineering is more like, okay, what math, what fundamentals, what is the, all the theory and so on that I need to learn. 
where you need a roadmap for that in AI engineering, but we don't like we just go with Python. We know the frameworks and so on. It's pretty like straightforward. So I think that's one of the differences between like software engineering, AI engineering, and so on. But they kind of like go hand in hand, and they're starting to come like way more integrated, like starting to come together because in the future, like you probably not even like have AI engineers. It'll just be like a full stack engineer, or you'll just be like basically just a coder because you need to know front end, you need to know back end, you need to know AI systems and so on. How to build systems around it is not just, okay, how do we be an AI engineer? Because you need to take your AI engineering, apply it to real business use cases, like actually build software systems around it. So there's a huge gap. If you want to get into the real world, if you don't know like how software systems work, like you're not going to be able to take your Jupyter Notebook, take your AI model and put that into software system if you don't know like at least the basic of those software systems. And also the direction where AI is going is more way more about like, okay, we use the AI agents, we use the AI models to generate the responses for us. We need to supervise it, see, okay, we can take these parts, we can glue them together. But to be able to do that, you actually need to know the fundamentals of pretty much like all the aspects. That's also why I'm getting into more like backend systems, frontend systems. I have no clue about like JavaScript, like Vue.js, React.js and so on. Okay, I, I know it, I know it. I know kind of like what you can do with it, but if I have a specific problem that I want to solve, I don't really know, okay, which one is the best to do it. Of course, you can just reach out to someone, but it's way better to have the fundamental understanding of, okay, I have this problem. I need to use these frameworks and the front end, back end and the AI module. And then it's more about like gluing it together. Because when you're at that point, like in the future, we'll just be able to prompt the AI models you can build like software systems basically just like as a single person, like maybe a few people and you can build like full scale software systems. For sure. I think now it's becoming more and more important just to have like that kind of software architecture yeah. understanding and yeah. system design. Like we can prompt as much as we want, but at the end of the day, like all we, as we always say, you know, garbage in is garbage out. Yeah. If you don't know how to prompt, if yeah. you don't know what you want, if you don't know what the finished product should look like, how are you going to get the AI to build it? So you don't need to be an absolute expert in like this exact React hook or this, you know, specific module anymore, which I think is really great in software engineering. I no longer need to memorize, you know, 100 machine learning methods, <laughs> but I need to know like high level goal. How do I break that down into smaller tasks and how do I tackle a problem? I think that's the one thing that's very similar in all engineering fields in general, but especially software engineering and AI engineering. You need to focus on becoming a good problem solver, right? No. Before you say, okay, let me just like master this module no. or master this technology. The first thing is how do I solve problems? Like it seems easy to people to do it all day, but if you're just starting out, it's retraining your brain how to think. If you go through traditional education, you don't really have to solve big problems. You're given like little cut down things that you need to answer on a test or multiple choice questions, and you're studying in order to pass a question, not to solve this kind of big task. And you as a freelance uh, software engineer now, or AI engineer, I think you face this a lot, right? Like sure. you get given a very vague, like client no. says, I wanna do this really weird thing. And you have to start by saying, okay, Let's break down the requirements. Let's solve the problem. So maybe you can touch on that. And that's kind of kind of similar, I think, to software engineering. Yeah, for sure. I, de I definitely feel like the gap or like the difference between software engineering and AI engineering is like becoming less and less. So at the end of the day, probably just like one engineer. And also for the AI models, if you're just talking about it, it's going so fast, like even just one year ago, like two years ago, we didn't even have like ChatGPT and all those large language models. So if you want to like be competitive, if you're getting into these spaces now, it's it's really important that you're actually like focus on and actually like spend time on thinking about, okay, how is it going to be in one or two years? Because if you're just focusing too much on the fundamentals or like going too deep on the theory, like all of these problems, they'll be solved by the last language models. Like they're doing the best job at that. Like they have more knowledge. They're way better at doing that specific task. So if you're thinking about, okay, what's going to happen in one, two years, it's way more about, okay, how do we glue all of these parts together? Because if you think about it, it's actually like, it, it will actually be the hardest problem for the AI machine learning models to to solve, also to like to stay up to date with the new technology and so on. But it will be able to like research the internet if we have like AI agents that can actually control your computer, create folders, run commands in your terminal, and all that. It's definitely in that direction. It's going. It can create full systems. It's not like you can just give it like project requirements. Say I want to use these frameworks. Just glue all of it together. You could try it out, but like your code would not run if you don't have the fundamental understanding and so on. So. That will probably be the hardest problem for AI agents to, to solve. So if you want to get into it now, I can't even imagine like taking a degree now, like getting out in five years. Um, you can't even imagine AI in, in, in five years, pretty much it's, it's going so fast, but that's the hardest problem for AI to solve. For sure, yeah. I remember back maybe five, six years ago when I was learning kind of like the beginner, beginner AI stuff, right? Like your core machine learning algorithms, 
uh, some data analysis stuff, data preparation. Like I remember the people that were in that field, they just knew that stuff, right? Like they were just good at like going into Jupyter Notebook and like spinning up some models. Like they didn't yeah. know how to build software. They couldn't spin up a front end or like a back end like Flask HTTP server. Like they just really specialized on that. Whereas software developers, same thing. Like they didn't know anything about AI. They weren't writing AI models. That was like, no, we'll leave that no. to like the nerdy like science kids, right? No. They were just like building software. But now, like you said, it's kind of coming together where these are merging because AI is becoming so much more accessible to use with large language models. But then at the same time when that happens, now like your normal software developers are now expected no. to like know how to use AI. And your AI developers, maybe they're more expert in that area, but they also like should have the basics on how do you For actually sure. integrate it and apply it. So I think if you're getting into this field now, sure, pick a specialization. Like if you want to be an AI engineer, there's different things you should learn than being a software engineer. But also a lot of the skills kind of combine together and you want to at least have that kind of fundamentals and basics of software engineering principles, like sure. how to solve problems, how to gather requirements, how to put users at the forefront. And like you've touched on a lot, like how do you actually provide value and solve a business use case, not just like get a cool bunch sure. of numbers popping up in your IDE, right? Yeah, so if you're talking about like two, five years out in the future, is, is, te is tech even relevant if you have like, it will way more be about like problem solving. Would it even be worth it to like learn coding, like learn on the fundamentals and stuff like that? But if we're going to have like five years, just AI agents, we can prompt. Of course, we need to know the fundamentals. We need to know the systems, but it will be way like higher level system architecture that we need to solve. Do you think, do you think like tech is irrelevant or will be in like five years? I don't think it's going to be irrelevant, but I think like maybe the mastery of the fundamentals you need to have might go down, right? Yeah. So for example, like when I was started, I would write like, you know, thousands of for loops, like to yeah. solve a bunch of problems. Yeah. Now you probably don't need to do that as no. much to like really get the concepts down because AI is gonna write it, you know, maybe 70, 80% of the time. Like now, even when I'm coding, I'm not normally writing like tons of lines of code like in the sequence. It's more like fixing lines of code or modifying no. them. So I have to understand what's going on, but I don't necessarily need to have like crazy expertise of all of these different languages. So I think that's overall a good thing because it means more people can build stuff. Sure. But the lack of skill that we're seeing now is that like people don't have experience building things, no. right? And as much as you can build something faster with AI, if you've never even built something small and you go and try to build this huge thing, you're gonna run into so many errors. You're gonna have problems. You're mm. gonna need to debug. You're gonna need to figure out where things went wrong and you're gonna need to be able to read through the code. No. Now sure, you can learn that while just using AI, but that's where we see like the gap between like the junior people just getting in and the senior people. They both have access to the same tools, sure. but the more senior people just know how to use yeah. them because they have the experience designing software in the past. So that's why I'm always saying now, yeah, you should learn this fundamental stuff. If you have time and you can like get it down, but you don't need to focus on the theory as no. much. It's more like get into applying it as fast as possible sure. and really make sure that you become good at problem solving, debugging, and also like overcoming frustration. Like, that's sure, that's a big sure. thing, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and again, like if you're doing like tons of different projects and so on, you learn how to solve problems, you know, like if you're seeing the same error messages like 100 times, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're basically just going to know, okay, how do I solve this problem? So it's just, it's just about like running into problems. The, it's the exact same thing. It's problem solving. You need to push, you need to push your brain. Like, it's the exact same if you go to like the gym and so on. You need to push your muscles. You need to gain strength. Like it's the exact same with your brain. Like you need to push your brain. You need to solve problems. So I, I think it's definitely like going that, that direction. It's interesting to see like, okay, now people are getting into like universities, like starting to code, learn to code and so on. Um, by using these tools, it's, I think it's going to be like pretty interesting to see it because we can see we can say okay these tools are pretty nice but we have the fundamental understanding we actually like did all the coding everything from scratch like we couldn't just go to large language model like just get the response out we had to write the for loops and all that where you don't really need to do that now yeah it's really interesting because i mean i was working for like a, a tech startup like yeah. i was kind of a co-founder about two years ago and that was right when chat gpt was coming out so at the beginning i was using it to code but minimally we didn't have these like integrated coding ai editors and like i wrote literally like hundreds of yeah. thousands of lines of code by hand like yeah. sitting there like typing 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 away which like now you just don't have to do so i got so much experience doing that like actually writing the code navigating the ide fixing these things now i just know what to do i know what needs to get done so when i look at the ai response like i know if it's correct or not immediately yeah. but i don't know if someone who's a complete beginner how do you gain that experience if you've never actually wrote the code yourself and I also don't want to say it's necessary to do that, but it's just we're getting into this weird paradigm sure. where you got to learn what's necessary, but then sometimes you skip the fundamentals. And now it's so easy to kind of leave those gaps in your knowledge. And that's why I say it's so important, especially if you're self-teaching, like you got to have a strong roadmap. 
uh, that really just guides you through like, okay, these are actually the important things to learn. Skip everything else sure. so that you can get through it as fast as possible. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely, I definitely think that that people they should really spend time on like thinking, okay, how is AI going to be in one two years? Of course, sure. it'll be pretty pretty hard to do if you don't have the fundamental understanding, like know what what's the direction and so on. But really spend time on doing research, figuring out okay what direction is it going because it's going to change so fast. Like we can just see like the last one two years. I think I think some of the large language models like they're starting to converge now because of data and so on. But they could come like like out a new breakthrough. Like ChatGPT just came overnight. Like from one day to mm -hmm. the other, it came out. Of course, it was not perfect when it when it came out. It's not perfect now, but it's it's going so fast. So definitely spend time on thinking what direction to take and make sure that that you're in the right path. Yeah, hundred percent. I think now it's like it's great to be getting into AI and learn those things. You just have to ask yourself like, what do you want to do? What's interesting yeah. to you? The reality is like we discussed like AI and AI engineers and software engineers and people in data science like they're they're coming closer and closer into this bubble where really they're just builders that are yeah. utilizing yeah. these tools. So I think again the focus is just solve problems, debug, get that real world experience, understand how do I take this knowledge of my brain actually apply this to a business? That's where at least I see so many people lacking. Like yeah. I have a lot of people go through my software development program and the main thing that differentiates the people that like land the jobs and ha are successful and the ones that don't is that the ones who land jobs actually built stuff. They no. went out on their own. They picked a cool project. They did all the exercises that we shared with them. And when they get to the end, they're like, yeah, like I know how to build <laughs> something. Like I can make this thing. The other people, like they just watch the videos like zombies, right? And then now they don't know how to do anything. And yeah, they can use AI to answer a question, but they can't. No really like apply that in the real world yeah, for sure. yeah. i mean you see guys guys like using these large language models and then once they have to write a follow from themselves like even in python they don't know how to write a follow in in python yeah i mean i think you should know how to do that again like you said it's, we'll see what happens in yeah. one or two years but it's like okay sure i can use ai to generate a paper but if i can't read it doesn't mean anything so for sure for sure yeah, yeah. One thing is guaranteed, like the, the future of the economy. So yeah, I think these are pretty good points, like just summarizing up, like what is the difference between software engineer, AI engineer, and so on. Like everything is pretty much just coming together now. AI is transforming the whole world. It's only going in one direction. Like it's, the path is pretty much clear. So make sure that you spend time on actually like thinking about where is AI going to be in two, five years, and so on. Go find your passion because at the end of the day, that's the most important.